back. We missed you so much. Sorry we had some technical issues, but we are back already with the state exam prep. The test is coming in May, but I'm so excited to share part one. Fraction basics. So we have three over five. The three in this example would be a numerator, and the five is a denominator. A whole number with this example and three over five again. But this one is a mixed fraction because we have a whole and an actual fraction. There, you got it? Yay, let's go to the next part. We have six and three fifths plus three and two thirds. So the way to add this up is, first off we have to do the holes, right? So we have three, six plus three, and then we have three over five plus two over three. So six plus three, well, six, seven, eight, nine. And then we have this. We could do the butterfly method, which all we have to do is look a little butterfly. Whoops. <laughs> well, we multiply three times three, which is nine plus two plus five is 10. So that would be our numerator. Denominator would be five times three, which is 15. So what we get in total is 19 over 15. So we have to make an improper become a mixed fraction. The way we do this is think about how many holes of 15, right? A whole number, right? Can go into 19. Well, if we just think of this as 15 into 19. We know that 15 goes into 19 one time. And now we're left with four. So remember that this would be the whole number. This remainder would be the numerator. And the 15 is the denominator. So that leaves us with 1 and 4 over 15. And we can't forget this. And this was 6 plus 3, which equals 9. So we add this up, we have 1 plus 9 equals 10, and 4 15 is our answer. So these two numbers are from the word problem, and we have 1 third and 6. One of the words that stuck out to me was the word each. And each usually tells us to divide. Well, how do we divide a whole number by a fraction? Well, this is what we do. We put 6 over 1, because what we know is that what, 6 over 1, 2 over 1, that all means that the number is the whole number. That's all that means, right? Remember, it's an improper fraction. We change it out. Same thing, right? With this one, we would do this, and then we have to change this to multiplying. So now we have 1 third, and then this one, we have to flip to become 1 over 6. And now what does that leave us with? 1 over 8. We have a number line. So we have 5, 5 and a half, 6, 6 and a half, 7, 7 and a half, and 8. So in case you don't remember, a number line is just as it says. It has numbers on lines and they use it for decimals, they use it for fractions, and they also use it for questions like this, even for mixed numbers. And for decimals, be sure to look out for the next video after this one that we will go over decimals and division. When they talk about line plot, that means that this could have one or two, this could have another one. That's all it means, just plotting the amount. All they're really asking here is just to add all that up. Five and a half, right? So let's put five and a half here. We have six. We have six and a half. Three times, so that's, it's easier to multiply that because it's a little faster, right? Then we have seven times two, right? It's one, two, so that would be 7 times 2 equals 14, so let's just put the 14 down here, and then we have an 8. Let's go touch on this one. Well, we have 6 times 3, right? 6 times 3 is 18. 3 times 1 is 3 over 2. So you have to think about it like that, okay? 3 times 1, that's how that works. Another mixed fraction like we had in the last problem. We're gonna have to make this into a whole, uh, excuse me, a mixed number. So we have the 18, the two, three over two. Now remember we do the two into three. 
this becomes one, right? Because two goes into three one time, and this would be our whole number. The two would be our denominator, and then we minus, and we're left with the remainder, which is our numerator. Right? So now we have one and one half that we need to add. So this becomes 19 and one half. For this part, please be careful with the, where you put the numbers, make sure we don't mix anything or miss anything. So we have the halves, which I'll put to the side. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna leave it right there though. We're gonna do five plus six is 11, plus four is 15, 15 plus eight, well, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, plus nine, four, so five, six, seven, eight, nine, 32, 132. 32, right? And don't forget this one. So we have three, four, five. So we have 52. And then now we have one half plus one half, which equals two over two, which is another way of saying one. So we have 62 plus one, which equals 53. This is the stack form, and we have different denominators. So what we usually do is we would multiply the numbers together to get the denominator. So for this one, we would multiply this by 3, and this one by 8. And that would give us the denominators that we need that are the same. So we would have whatever you do to the bottom, you do to the top, whatever you do to the top, you do to the bottom. That's always a rule for the multiplying and dividing for fractions. So we have the 1 times 8. And 8 times 3, 5 times 3 here, which would be 15. 8 times 3, 24. See, we have the same exact denominator. Now we have to subtract that. But uh-oh, now we have a small number here and a bigger number there. So we have to do something called regroup. Now when we regroup, when it comes to these kind of fractions and mixed numbers, is that we have to take one from here and give it here. But remember when we regroup regularly, it'll just be one. Because it's fraction, we have to use the same number and put it on top of each other. Because the cool thing about math is that you just have to change the 24 over 24 and that's the same thing as one, right? So back to over here. So now we're gonna add that and now we're gonna get a new number. So 24 plus eight is, well, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 31, 32. So we have 32 over 24, and then we have the 15 over 24. We're gonna subtract that, and we can never forget our whole numbers. So 32 minus 15. Well, we're gonna have to do this again, right? 15, and then it's 12, not 15, excuse me, 12 minus five, that's seven, and one. Then we're left with 24. And then 14, uh, excuse me, 13, and that's the number we're working with. 13 minus 6 would be 7. No problem, 3 over 10 plus 27 over 100. I'm going to stack it so it's easier to see what we're doing. If you remember the last time, we're going to have to change the denominators to make sure that we're going to be able to add them because that's how it works when it comes to adding fractions. So we have the 10 and then the 100. So it's easier to make the 10 change into 100 instead of having 100 times 10 because that's a larger number. So let's do that. And the way we're going to do that is by multiplying what? Well, 10 times the number equals 100. You guessed it, 10 times 10. And remember the rule, whatever you do to the numerator, you do to the denominator. Either our denominator is going to be 100. So we multiply by 10 here. We're going to do it also to the top, which is the denominator, the numerator. So 3 times 10 30. So now that's our new fraction that now we can add to 27 over 100. And when we do that, we get, well, 7 plus 0 is 7, 3 plus 2 is 5 over 100. Here are Mr. Davis's pizzas. We have one pizza, two pizzas, three pizzas, and four pizzas, right? So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and all of them are cut into six pieces. So typically you would think, oh, you want us to multiply one six times four, but guess what happens? If you just do that, then it's only going to be one slice of pizza, one slice of pizza, one slice of pizza, one slice of pizza. Because what happens is that when you multiply by four, multiply straight across, that's four six. Is that true to what we're looking for? No. We are actually looking for 
Well, we have six pieces here, six pieces here, six pieces here, and six pieces here. So then that means that we do six times four would get us, well, in our six times tables, right? So we have six, 12, 18, and 24. But we have to add. We are going to worry about the fractions that have the same denominator. Perfect. So now the denominator stays the same, and now we have the four. This is an improper fraction, so we have to change it to a mixed number, right? So we do three into four. Always remember that that would be our denominator when we finish. The four, we would do three divided by four, which will give us one, and that is our whole number. And I'll put denom right for short and then we are left with one so that leaves us with one and one third now we can't forget that now we have to add that we have our one half to add so then we're gonna do the butterfly method here so we're gonna do this and this one times two is two three times one is three three times two is six so now we have five over six and not forget the one, so it's one and five, six. What did I tell you? We're gonna have word problems. Yes, open word problem that is open-ended, so you can't just choose an A, B, C, or D answer. Guess what? That means that you have to show your work. So for this specific problem, we have to make sure, number one, we have the right measurements. Number two, we are reading thoroughly to make sure that we understood it. Three, show your work. We're going to add this, but we have 3 plus 1 is 4, so we can put that to the side. Now we're left with the 1 8, 1 half, and 3 fourths. Alright, so this is to the side, right? Make sure not to forget that. Well, we're going to, let's just do these two, right? Let's do the 1 8 plus 1 half. If you're going to make the 2 change to 1 8, let's do it this way. We're going to change the 2 to 8, because it's the easiest number to do, right? So, what are we going to do? We're going to multiply what by 2. To multiply by 4. What you do to the denominator, you do to the numerator. Right? So, 1 times 4 is 4 over 8. And then we're going to add 1 8. So, guess what? Now we have 5 eighths. Now, we're going to change this denominator to 8. This is a little easier, right? So, what we do to the bottom, we do to the top. So, the same idea, right? 6 over 8, 5 eighths. Plus 6 eighths is what? Yes, 11 eighths. Improper fraction, or an improper fraction. 8 into 11 is 1. Remember when we do this? Right, so that's 1. And then we're left with 8, 9, 10, 11, and 3 eighths. Now we can't forget the 4, so we have 4 plus 1 and 3 eighths, which equals 5 and 3 eighths. That's a wrap, guys. We finished this video. I can't wait for you to see my other videos here and the other ones here. Please like, share, subscribe, share with your friends who are having some problems with math. Take care. I'll see you next video. Hold me close till I get up. Time is better.